Now, let's take a look at the classic wages and education regression model. The dependent variable is wages. The x variable of interest is education. We have a whole bunch of other control variables here, such as experience, IQ, gender, and so on. And we also have the error term here. Recall that the error term contains all other factors that impact wages that haven't been included in the model. So all factors apart from education, experience, IQ, gender, etc. Now suppose there is an omitted variable called A and is contained in the error term. An omitted variable is one that should be included in the model as an X variable, but it isn't for some reason. Perhaps the data is missing or impossible to quantify. As such, it's not included as an X variable, but instead is contained in the error term. Now, if A is correlated to education and also correlated to wages, then this means education is correlated with the error term and we now have a problem. Basically, the estimate of the coefficient for education cannot be trusted. It's now a bias estimate, and its value is not reflective of its true population value. Also, note that the regression coefficient with the hat is a sample estimate, and the coefficient without the hat is a true population coefficient. So the sample estimate is no longer a good reflection of its population value. Let me give you a little example to make this clearer. Suppose education is completely useless, that is, school, university, have nothing to do with your wage. You can go to school all you want, and that's not going to have an impact on your wage. So, back to our model. What does this mean? Well, if education truly has no impact on wages, then the population value of the coefficient of education, beta 1, should be 0. Now, suppose again, there is an omitted variable in this model, in the error term, that is correlated to education. Let's say this is competitiveness. It does have an impact on wages, but was excluded from the model because it's a difficult quality to measure and quantify. But competitiveness influences someone's performance at school and also their attitude at work. So let's say someone who is competitive will perform better at work and hence have a higher wage. If someone is very competitive, they're likely to work hard and get promoted at work, so their wage is consequently likely to be higher. Now, since competitiveness is also correlated with education, a higher level of competitiveness is also associated with a higher level of education. This may be because they're likely to study harder at school, since they're more competitive, do better in school, and likely to attain more education. Similarly, someone with a low level of competitiveness is likely to earn a lower wage. Since competitiveness is correlated with education, they're also likely to have attained less education. The rationale here is that they're not competitive, so they do not perform as well at work, but also do not attain as much education as they are less competitive in their studies. So what do we observe? It seems as though wages and education have a positive relationship. As education was high, wages was also high, and vice versa. Their correlation here is positive. So if we were to estimate a regression using data, we would incorrectly produce a positive sample coefficient for education, because education moves positively with wages. So here is the bias. We know that beta 1 should be 0, yet our sample beta 1 estimate is positive. This is the endogeneity bias. And all this was caused by our x variable, education, being correlated with the error term. We've talked a lot about the endogeneity bias, so what's the fix? Well, the fix to the endogeneity bias is a two-stage least squares regression model. This model is fundamental in econometrics because it's able to successfully untangle causality from spurious correlations. However, it's often difficult for students to learn two-stage least squares for the first time as it can be mathematically intensive, yet most textbooks or university courses use this approach. Hi guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I've actually got a full course on the fundamentals of two-stage least squares where I teach you the whole concept of two-stage least squares from scratch. And the cool thing is, I don't use any mathematics at all. It's entirely based on logic and intuition, so perfect for a beginner. This course is designed for students enrolled in an econometrics course who have to learn two-stage least squares for the very first time, or for research students and academics who are not quantitatively inclined. Since you guys are my YouTube students, you guys will get a massive discount. So click on the link below in the description to check out a free 10 minute preview of my course and see what you think. And if you like it, be sure to enroll. Okay, all the best.